Hey everybody, it's Glenn back in this video as you join me for a Star Wars toy hunting special. With The Force Awakens just being released, there are perhaps more Star Wars toys on shelves than ever, yet in this episode we're not restricting ourselves to Star Wars toys. We've taken a gander at all of those in previous episodes, and toy makers aren't the only ones who want a piece of the Star Wars pie. And so it is from t-shirts, to more t-shirts, to books, to magazines, to comics, to posters, to lunchboxes, to more lunchboxes, to water flasks, to trading cards, to pencil cases, to more pencil cases, to cushions, to key rings, to flashing key rings, to sweatshirts, to belts, to socks, to more socks, to even more socks, to slippers, to more slippers, to boxer shorts, to more boxer shorts, to sleep masks, to layer hair buns, to Yoda is, to batteries, to yogurt. <gasps> And there's probably Star Wars wallets too, not that we Star Wars fans will be needing them after buying all that stuff, unless that is, you're buying all this stuff for a Star Wars fan. <clears throat> hint, hint. And if that's the case, you might want to grab some Star Wars wrapping paper too. Yeah, all of that isn't even the tip of the iceberg, and I haven't even got to my hand-picked, um, gem? So hit the stores with me as I track down the top five things bearing the Star Wars name. I'll count them down. You decide. Weird or wonderful, inventive or just plain daft. And we'll be easing our wallets into this one by kicking it off at Discount Store b &H. Where it being the season to be jolly and all that, 89 of your finest English pennies will buy you a Star Wars Christmas tree bauble containing a cookie. I'm rather taken by this fetching Death Star one. There's a logic to the design with the Death Star being a sphere, as is a Christmas tree bauble. Plus, nothing says Christmas like a massive weapon designed to destroy an entire planet. Hang on, what's this Disney one doing back here? Oh, actually saying that, Star Wars is Disney now too, isn't it? Disney own everything! Star Wars, Marvel, your wife and kids, your car, your life. Number four finds us at Tesco's and this Stormtrooper pint glass, because should you ever, heaven forbid, find yourself watching the prequels, you'll need something to drown your sorrows with. Plus, if you have a borderline alcoholic Star Wars fan to buy for this Crimbo, you can combine that pint glass with this nifty little Millennium Falcon bottle opener. I've sneakily opened the box so I can get a better look. I like it. Classic design, nice white frosted glass. I think I'll get one. Couldn't see a price on the shelf and there's no price on the box, although it does say join the dark side as if I need an invitation to do that. <laughs> Price checker tells me it's five squid. I'll be grabbing one of these. Oh, hang on. Unsuitable for dishwasher. They expect me to wash it manually. Are they insane? They'll be expecting me to wash my bed sheets by beating them against a rock on the bank of a river next. Moving on, yet yeah, also at the same time moving back to B&H for Star Wars Play-Doh. Oh, do you remember Play-Doh? Good times as a kid, my mother sitting me down with a few tubs of Play-Doh. I'd craft for hours, rolling and mixing all the various colours together, then immediately regretting it. But seriously though, your only limit was your own imagination. Sadly though, it seems Play-Doh has now gone the way of Lego, in that it seems less about creativity and doing your own thing, and more about just building whatever they prescribe you to build. So looking at the packaging, and it seems that the cans that contain the Play-Doh are now the toy to be played with as much as the Play-Doh itself. Strange. Actually looking at the back, and I feel a whole lot less grumpy grandpa about it, as it seems the Millennium Falcon is the mold-making part that allows you to mold the Play-Doh into TIE Fighters and pizza slices? Oh, the Star Destroyers. <laughs> And now I want pizza. I'll call Domino's when I get home. I'm actually really beginning to change my tune on this Play-Doh set as looking at Leia there, I feel like if God created Play-Doh for one reason, it was so we could model Leia's hair buns out of it. For number two, I've managed to make it to the end of a Mad Max-style Fury Road, which is where I find my post office. Seriously, there's a whole host of dirty mutants behind me right now, clawing at me. But I'm here to pick up the best stamps in the galaxy, and if Mars do invade, it's because the post office overstepped the mark with their boastful claim there. 
Likely more of a collector item because, frankly, who would want to give these away by sticking them on an envelope? However, saying that, who wouldn't want to give Ray a lick? She's pretty tempting. Or maybe you'd prefer to lick Emperor Palpatine. Hey, whatever floats your boat, I'm not here to judge. <laughs> At number one, it's nature's elixir, the fundamental building block of life. I mean, I'm happy enough to drink it out of the tap, but stick Star Wars and a picture of Kylo Ren or Rey on it, and sure, I'll buy a bottle of water. And oh look, they have a second pack bearing droids, those infamous lovers of water. Droids old and new in the form of BB-8 from The Force Awakens. He's cute. Wish they'd get more imaginative with the bottles, though. And just as I say that, look at these cute character bottles and the Stormtrooper and Boba Fett are one per case. Bye, bye, bye. Anyway, if you fancy venturing with me on more toy hunting, you can click this video for my toy hunting video playlist. And thanks for joining me on this journey of Star Wars merchandise and its various highs and lows, although I'll let you be the judge of what are the highs and what are the lows in the comments below. And I hope to see you in my next video. Mm, bye.